What's up guys and gals and welcome back for the next episode of Stalker Clear Sky. My name is Splattercat, happy to have you here today as we hang out for a little while and kill a lot of bandits. Like seriously, we had had some problems in the first game. I think there's a little adjustment period where I'm trying to get used to this game versus playing the first Stalker because the enemies are definitely a lot more accurate in this one. They're better at shooting you. Anybody with a pistol is somebody you want to kill first. And so anyways, it's kind of a scary thing going into the new game because things have moved around a lot in this game and I'm not used to it. I sold off a bunch of loot. I've been holding my position here for quite some time actually in between episodes. I think that invasions come every now and again. Let me see if I can grab anything useful from over here. Looks like we only have anti-rad medication right there unfortunately. The UI is a little bit different too. I had actually had an accidental death to radiation in the first episode. It said that I was in a radiation zone, but I assumed something would happen on screen that was more noticeable before I just dropped dead. I was wrong about that situation. And so, you know, it happens sometimes. Let me trade with this guy real fast. You look like you've so got money. What is it that you need? I need you to give me money for all of these random guns that are inside of my inventory. How does that you sound to you? Something. Ooh, we got sluggy rounds. How do I swap in sluggy rounds? I remember there was a way to do it in the first game. Condition is actually quite a bit lower on that one. Is this condition lower too? Okay, let's not worry about it then. Let's get 300 more rubles. We've got 1,000 rubles right now. How much longer do you have to wait, man? We're doing business right now. Calm me? down. I'm going to put my gun away so you don't shoot me. And also I'm going to turn my flashlight on because it's scary in here and I don't like the darkness. It makes me feel nervous. I'm also going to look for dead bodies of my clansmen because they have better guns than I do. And so unfortunately, oh man, there's no guns right. Can I go up here? Ooh, the ladder works. That's pretty cool. Okay, so let's take a look and see if we got any loot up top. I don't think that we will, but I think we've actually solidified this location pretty well in the last combat. I'm going to go back down. And let's look around for better strategic assets to take. I think as far as the war is concerned, we can press the P key and take a look. The faction war is very much going in our favor right now. They are playing a little bit of a catch-up, but I think as long as we're here to help out, I say that kind of cockily. I don't know. Is that the word that I'm looking for? Cockily? Eh, I don't like that word. That word feels filthy to me. I'm not going to say cockily anymore. What is this? So on the plus side, in the previous episode, at the trailhead, it looks like the... Ooh, band-aids and first aid kits? Yeah, I'll take those. We might need those in the future. I need to assign myself a first aid kit button as well while we're here. Let me take a look at the options real fast. I had mentioned that I wanted to do that with the sound, dynamic music, and whatever. I was going to turn on subtitles too. I think we can actually make quick band-aid in here somewhere. And I would highly recommend that you do this if you're going to play the game. So quick bandage. I'm going to put that as for quick bandage. We'll make that mouse 5. Quick med kit. We're going to make that mouse 4. Those are going to be extra mouse buttons on my mouse. And it looks like going into our menu actually closes down my recording. So I apologize for that right there. I had to make sure I got the audio resync back up because it randomly closed my menu. So I don't see anything else worth looking at right here. Let's take a look at our PDA. We'll go to our map and we'll try and find... Looks like straight to the north is where the next battle we need to jump in on is. Ooh, that was a lot of just like prepositions and random stuff. In on is helping. Oh, they're in the bushes. That's kind of scary. I don't know if I want to fight in some bushes over here. Ooh, we got them flanked though. We might be able to help out on this side if I fire slowly. Okay, so we got one right there. We will assist a little bit. But they have visibility on me and I don't have visibility on them because they can see through bushes and I can't. So I like how organic this game is though by comparison to the first one. Like there's not really like things you're supposed to be doing. You kind of just move around as they need you throughout the map. And it's kind of a cool difference between this one and the first one. And I like that. I like how it's a little bit more emergent than the first game. I... That guy's got a pistol which means that he's a problem for us. The guys with pistols in this game are like snipers. This guy over here's got a machine gun. So as this beachhead right here moves forward or I guess as this spearhead moves forward is a better word to use for it. I think I'll probably follow behind the guys with the good guns. I'm having trouble seeing what I'm shooting at. And if he goes down, we're going to scoop at the MP5 with a quickness. So that's the other thing. I'm kind of going to move in behind these guys as they move in and die. So we can upgrade our weapons. I'm going to loot from right here because I don't think we're the center of fire anyways. It looks like they're all down. I'm going to get my loot from this dead dude over here because we need some cash on the front end of the game. The economy is a little bit more stingy in this game. you got to be aware of that. I looked up a bunch of like general purpose tips for starting out this game versus playing the first one and definitely ooh, we got a long rifle right there so we're no longer missing that I'm gonna take that real quick let me swap it in very quickly because I do think that it's superior to the gun that we already have right the accuracy is way higher and the well, conditions a little bit lower on that one so I guess we'll just have to live with that it's gonna give us a net chance of it breaking on us We've also got what looks like a stash out here so let's go investigate that keep an eye out because the developers did like to put a whole bunch of like random anomalies of things out when they're stashes so Watch out for that there. We've got... Is it on the back side, maybe? Maybe it's not... 
There we go. I had to play around with it a little bit. Okay, so we got that stash right there. It's going to give us some extra medical supplies. We don't need them, which is a good thing for us. I don't see any other stashes over here. It looks like our team went that way. What's out in this direction, though? It looks like we've got... What is this? A capture the machine yard. Okay, I don't want to do that, but I'm going to follow these guys over here because it looks like they might have some better luck. They're equipped better than we are, so if we could just be like a little tag-along over here, I think it might benefit us in the long run. Let's meet up with this little squad, and we'll see if we can assist them by just like pushing fire in any location we can see. Looks like we've got like a little house over here. A little house or a dairy. Not really like a little house on the prairie, but kind of similar. Let's see if I can put some shotgun rounds over there. Laid him out very, very nicely. There are, oh, we got a pistol guy over there, so watch out. He's going to be able to do some damage if we don't take care of him quickly. Watch out for anybody with a pistol. They're like snipers in this game, and they take you out quick, especially at close range. I hear radiation. Go ahead and put a round on him, I guess. Oh, I like how it only reloads one bullet if you only fire one. That's actually one of those things that most games would ignore. They wouldn't make two separate reload animations, and I appreciate that. That's a cool thing. Where is this guy? I know you're still in here. Ooh, this is hectic. I don't like this at all. Making me feel nervous right now. Did they get him or is he still in here? It looks like they got him. Okay. So since we got him, I think what I'll do is we'll grab some of the bullets from out of here. And maybe, yeah, let's just loot these corpses real fast. I'm going to follow this group wherever they're going. I don't know. I will follow you. Follow you wherever you may see. Okay, so we got a couple bullets right here. We'll grab that. Got the Makarovs over here. Did we lose one of our guys or one of theirs? Okay, so another Makarov, a little bit more Licka. I'm going to sell it to this guy because I've got him in it. I don't want him to lead me back to base, but he's got cash. And so I don't know if it's worth it to hold on to the liquor, but I'm going to sell some of it for right now because we haven't been having radiation problems. Is that gun better than mine? Okay, let's swap that in then, and we'll get rid of this one. And all these little baby Macs in here. I picked up a scope, by the way. I was looking around the map in between episodes, and I found like a random little box that had a scope in it. I don't know if it's going to help us out at all, but I don't have any extra bullets for my assault rifle. I'm saving it right now. I'm saving myself for bigger engagements. And so we'll get rid of that. I'll probably sell the slug rounds. I don't know. Are the slug rounds more useful? I don't even know how to swap those in. I should probably take a look at the controls and figure it out. And that's going to give us another 560 rubles. So we're sitting at 1,500 right now. It also keeps our weight nice and low. So we don't have to worry about you know being super slow while we run around the battlefield. I'd like to maintain our dexterity as we play. Our next objective is looking to be up to the northeast a little ways. Although it looks to me as though they aren't pushing that hard in any direction right now. It looks like they took the pumping station all by their lonesome. Where is the collect our reward at? Oh, we've actually completed the quest? Well, I don't like to leave things half done. I mean, it looks like we've taken superiority. I took from when they described the quest. I thought we had to take, like, the whole swamp, but it looks like... What is this right here? Oh, it's a zone. Okay, so it allows you to transition in between zones. we got a black backpack and the big pipe. Oh, it looks like they're attacking that big location. Let's help out with that, and then we'll go back to base, and we'll collect our reward, I suppose. I don't want to clear out the entire zone, but I just want to get the majority of it done so we don't have to worry about it. I tend to get sidetracked with some of these, like, support objectives. So where are we going right now? Where are you guys headed off to? It doesn't look like you're actually hitting this from the direction I would expect you to. Maybe we're going wide, and we're hitting it from that way. I don't know. It might be a good idea to flank, maybe. Sometimes you can do some serious damage in this game if you flank along the way. I'm going to follow the guy with the machine gun, because I want him to die along the way. I mean, if any of you guys die, I would prefer it not be the guys with the shotguns. That's one of the major transition points in the first game, is when you go from your first pistol to over to like your first automatic weapon. Ooh, this is like an open field in front of like full cover for them. I don't like that at all. I'm going to go in from this direction, maybe. See if I can take advantage of the chaos from behind this rock. Use it for cover. I don't see him anywhere. Woo! This is going to get intense real fast. And if they throw a grenade at us, we're going to be flushed out real hard. Alright, so I like this rock right here. I also kind of like this. 
I don't see any enemies around, so I'm going to take this on my own. They're going to spread out. We got a couple of enemies right there. We could ambush them if we get lucky. Okay, so it looks like the firefight is engaged. I'm going to watch this flank over here and just make sure that they don't get turned. Like an already read interesting book page. Oh, shit. All right, let's put a couple rounds in right there. I actually don't know if we have the forces we need to win this fight. That's a lot of guys over there. Just put some fire on them. All right, I may go through most of my ammo right here. That's the other thing that I'm worried about is they have such a solid density of enemies that I don't even know if we have the bullets to kill them all. That guy's toast. Don't be a hero. No, don't be a hero, Pavel. You were my... Here, I'm going to help. No, they took him out. He was my favorite NPC, and now he's gone forever. We'll never see him again. We got a couple of enemies down over there. That guy looks like he's locked and loaded with a pistol, so he's going to be able to beat in on us real fast. I'm going to shift positions. See if I can take a strong dominant flanking position from this corner. Because it looked like they flushed back a little bit. Like they're falling back pretty rapidly. Oh. And if that's going to be it, we need to stay on them. Ah. I hope this barrel's bulletproof. This would be a long, unpleasant day for us if it isn't. Oh, he's down. There we go. That's one of the reasons I always take a flanking position is because people can help you if you get pinned down. Our guys are in here. It looks like they're doing a little bit of work. Okay, so we're in. I think we've basically taken the position now. I like this by comparison to the first game. I feel like it's a lot more emergent. It's a lot less guided, but it still feels like a lot of... Like, I love the way you just kind of go from battlefield to battlefield. It feels like more of a shooter than the first game. Oh, there it is. You got lit up, my friend. Cheeky Breaky to you indeed. Cheeky Breaky. Who's remaining? Ooh, put the hippest of fire on that guy. We've got him pinned down back there, but... I don't know if we're going to be able to be successful. Put a couple rounds on you. And maybe hope that it flushes you out. I prefer to hip fire in this game, by the way. I don't know if I've talked about that. I always prefer to hip fire. Did we get that guy back in the corner? Oh, I laid him out. Okay, I've got a dead body indicator on my map. Oh, no, never mind. He's still... There must be a door or something back there, maybe. I... Th Okay, so it looks like we took care of business. Let's go ahead and reap our rewards real fast. We lost one of our guys right here, but he only had a shotgun. That's disappointing. Any you guys got like a real weapon in here? Or at least ammo for a real weapon? I don't really care, but like I need something that's automatic. Like something that can lay down some brucka. Otherwise, we're just like kind of the weakest member of the force right here. Got that right there. Grab the little baby Max. It looks like we lost somebody on this side. Oh, I see a Max. There we go. I see an MP5. There it is. We got that Heckler and Koch going on right now. All right, so let's take you. I don't know how many bullets I have for you. Yeah, I was going to say, I think it fired a different round than our Makarov normally does. So unfortunately, unless we find more rounds on one of these guys, we're going to be a little bit stuck. There's one more body over here. If you're wondering where I'm getting that information from, if you look at the map in the top left-hand corner, you can see little gray dots. That's how you can find ammo and kind of like random lootables for yourself while you play the game. We're almost maxed out on weight, so we need to find somebody to sell some of this stuff to. Hey, buddy. What you got for me? You're a Misha pacifist? My ass. I just watched you storm an entire base full of people while rifling them with holes. Okay, I'm going to put that away so you don't get mad. The NPCs in this game get mad when you point guns at them. That gun has, let's see, what's the best one right here? Does the MP5 sell for anything better, like 456? See, since I don't have ammo for it, it might be a better idea just to sell it, but maybe I can buy some ammo for it back at base. That's the other thing to think about here. Are any of these better than what I have? These conditions are all pretty terrible. Let's go ahead and sell them. I don't want any of those. Which of these is best? That one right there has got an okay condition. That one's by far the greater so we'll get rid of you. That's going to give us 540 more rubles. 
I may get rid of some of those, get rid of some of the bread that we have, get rid of some of the ammo too. There's no reason to carry around more than 100 shotgun shells. You just don't actually, I'm going to carry like 50. You don't sell them, I'm sorry, you don't use them that rapidly, so there's no point carrying them around. Liquor, we've got plenty of. That one's equal to our other gun. There it is. So we'll trade those off, and now we're up to 2,200 rubles. We're moving on up in the world. We're not wealthy, but we're not broke anymore either. Let's take a moment. I'd like to get up in here and maybe see if we could find any loot distributed among any of these corpses. Sometimes there's boxes and lootables in here. So, yeah, there we go right there. Got ourselves some AK ammo. We've also, if I break that right there, sometimes those drop loot. Sometimes they don't, though. So don't expect them to always drop loot. There we go. There's the good stuff. We got a couple radiation medications and some boxes full of medical supplies. Doesn't look like there's anything else right here. Sometimes they put them up in weird places, though, where you can't get at the stuff that's inside the boxes. There's a little bit more. Is that ammo for anything useful? What is this right here? Oh, it's Full Metal Jacket, so that's going to be for the MP5. Yeah, so now that we have two magazines, I may actually keep this real fast. We've got ourselves some quote-unquote reading material. That's going to be code in battle. Like, hey, throw me some reading material. Uh, and they throw you a magazine. I mean, anybody who's halfway clever would pick that up pretty quickly, but either way. Like, I'm out of magazines. No, I have no more Playboys. We're all done for. Does anybody actually order Playboy anymore? It seems like old, dirty, like old man porn. Like, what's the need? Unless you're really into that stuff. The, inter the internet is a thing, so why would you ever waste, like, a subscription on it? I don't know. This seems like a waste of time. Eh. The age, the era of sticky pages is over. Alright, so I don't think anything's gonna be inside of these. I could blow them up with a shotgun, I guess, but, eh, why bother? I think that's just about everything we're gonna get from right here, so let's hightail it back to base. And once we get there, we'll see what our rewards are looking like. It looks like this guy over here is gonna be our guide. What is this? Oh, a big stash. Hell yeah, I'll take that for sure. Yup, let me put my so, gun away. What is it that you need? And since we've taken, let me check real fast. The faction war, it looks like we've largely marginalized the Renegade's faction strength. It looks like we are clearly the dominant faction now. Our statistics, we've killed quite a few people. It looks like Clear Sky likes us, Renegades don't like us, but it started out that way. I think the Greens are pips into, like, positivity or something like that. I don't know, everybody likes a good drink What's of positivity every now and again. Let's talk to this guy. I'm gonna sell off... Any random guns. I'm not going to carry around a bunch of med kits either. It just doesn't seem like it's worth it. Uh, that's one of the things that I learned from the first game is carrying around a bunch of like random supplementary items. It maxes out your... What is that right there? Oh, that's for our AK. Well, hell, I'm not even going to use the MP5 then. I'll keep it in reserves, but I'm not going to keep all these other guns. I'm going to sell off all the remainder of our shotgun shells as well. Because from what I can tell, that means that we've actually got 180 rounds for our assault rifle, so why would we bother? We should be able to use the AK from here on in. What's the condition look like? Oh, it's perfect. Hell yeah, okay. Can I use that on it? How do I affix that to my... That's worth a lot. And so it's a Soviet-made optical scope. Uses a dovetail mount, which is standard in Warsaw Pact country. So that should be the AK-47 right there. It is part of the Warsaw Pact. So anyways, if you don't know, the Warsaw Pact was a thing back during the Cold War that was like the equivalent in the Eastern Bloc to... NATO, very, very similar. They had their own weapon sets and things like that. We made NATO, they made the Warsaw Pact. That's all you really need to know. It's not that big of a deal. Unless you, like, really, really like the Cold War. I've been getting into it lately. I've actually been reading, not necessarily from the Soviet end, but I've been reading a lot of books about Mao and Kim Il-sung lately. That's actually a fascination for me. The rise of North Korea and Kim Il-sung and kind of his dynasty that goes on over there. I read a lot of books about North Korea and I watch a lot of documentaries too. And so anyways, I've been reading a book called Under the Loving Care of the Fatherly Under the Loving Care of the Fatherly Leader. It's like a 1000 book encyclopedia, or I'm sorry, it's like a 1000 page encyclopedia on just kind of like Kim Il-sung all the way through in North Korea and kind of like how everything functions. It's a very fascinating novel. What do you want, uh, actually, I'll talk about it in one of the video logs. Let's go back to Clear Sky Base. I think we've done a pretty good chance over here, or at least I think we've done a pretty good job of, you know, finishing off our objectives. I don't know what these little blue things mean over here. Like, are those turn-ins, maybe? I don't know. The little blue things seem like they're worthwhile. Like, maybe I get something from those, or are they just little talky points? What can you offer me? I will reward you with information about a valuable but tough piece of loot. Keep on your toes, though. Its previous owner failed to heed my advice. How much is that going to set me back? 200? Agreed. Let's do it. And so here are the coordinates. It looks like he gave me some kind of maybe a stash. Our secret stash is for your money. Selling them all down the river to you alone. How much is that going to set me back? 300? What's actually in there? Bandages and vodka? Nah, not interested. Let me trade with you. It doesn't look like he wants anything other than liquor. 
I wonder if people in this game give you better prices on various things that are around. Something to think about there. This actually has a different icon over here. It's got like a little cog instead of like uh, an exclamation point. I think the exclamation points are purchasable stashes for us, whereas the cogs, maybe they do something different. How's it going? Oh, he fixes your gear. How's it going, Mr. Fix-It? There's hardly any equipment. It's like life after a nuclear war. If we do get a hold of something, it's about to fail anyway, and there ain't shit around to use for spare parts. That's why I'm having to adapt whatever I find and use it as best I can. Only last week I needed to make a radio receiver. What do you think I use for parts? That's right, a goddamn fridge! <laughs> I'm not sure whether to laugh or cry. <laughs> oh, we've got, hey, this ain't no walk in the park. Yeah, there ain't much to get excited about around here. Not like the garbage. I heard they dug up old Soviet caches. After the accident at the Chernobyl NPP, they sent convoys there with contaminated vehicles and equipment and all sorts of other crap. They thought it was all waste because it was radioactive. That was then. Nowadays, nobody would even call that radiation. So there's a real gold rush going on there. Stalkers are flocking over there from all over the zone to dig for loot. It's a pity not much of it filters through down here, unless Labedev sends the boys to pick up specific components. Well, how's your personal life? Nothing special. I repair and upgrade weapons and suits. Basically, I do whatever needs getting done. If you need something fixed, I'm your man. Yeah, if I could get a few spare parts, I would make the guy some real nice toys. Weapons, armor, equipment, I'd take them all to a whole new level. Remember, if you bump into something useful, bring it here, and I'll do it all real nice. That's a promise. See, so now we know we don't need secret cheat codes to get to the next level. We just need gray. Got any work? There is something. I've been looking for diagrams of some upgrades for a while. If you come across any, keep them and bring them to me. Here's a list of the ones that I'm looking for. He wants information about barrel mods for the MP5. He wants Kevlar armor, and he wants the MP5A3 for a muzzle break. So if I do upgrades here... Get your gun talking at the right time. Oh, shit. What is that? Oh my god! There's like a full upgrade system right here. That's the shit! What?! So we can increase magazine capacity. Oh my god, there's kind of like a little RPG mechanic, but not for your character, for your guns. I don't want a higher rate of fire. I'd like to have something that increases precision, though. So that'd be nice. I'd spend some money on that. Do you want to install a bolt mechanism modification? Yeah, let's do it. So it's got a bolt mechanism modification. 10% more accuracy, perfect. And then other upgrades are required in order to install this. We can do an operating mounting rod that lowers recoil. We can do an operating mod. So RPM rounds per minute lowered. So it, it fires slower, but you've got less recoil. Okay, and so we've got an under barrel mount. It gives you a grenade launcher. Okay, that'd be kind of cool. An attachment with links into the barrel. Increasing your muzzle velocity. Flatness? What does flatness do? Replacing the standard stock with a polymer gives you better handling, recoil, and then a greater amount of ammo. Or we can go for a barrels replaced and gun parts are adjusted to a new caliber. You can give it 5.56 five, by 4.5. Why would I do that versus 3.9? Is the 4.5, does it do more damage? What's the difference between a 5.56 five, by 4.5 and a 5.56 five, by 3.9? Is by 4.5 NATO? And by 3.9 is Warsaw? I think 4-5 might be NATO. I don't know, but I thought that... I thought Warsaw Pack fired 7-6-2. Eh, I don't know. Either way. I'm not going to play around too many more things because we don't have the money in the first place. Can you attach a scope for me for free? Like, how do I just get a scope on here? Like, let's say that I wanted a scope. In the first game, you just dragged and dropped it onto there. Do I take it? So if I click on that, it closes it. How do I add a scope to it? That's a Warsaw Pact weapon, so it should work. I may need to look this up, and then we can see what we can do with it, maybe? I don't know. I don't think we... Maybe we do do it through here, but I'll look it up after this episode. We're out of time. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Clear Sky. I'll see y'all next time. I'm enjoying the hell out of this game, actually. I like this one a lot. I like how it's got kind of that underlying organic structure of taking points and things like that, aside from the storyline. Definitely something we could sink our teeth into. I'll see y'all later. How do, everybody?